Everything you see, everything you feel, everything you think you know could be a simulation. What if the world around you isn't real, but instead part of a hyper-advanced computer program designed by beings far more intelligent than us? This isn't science fiction anymore. It's a real scientific theory taken seriously by philosophers, physicists, and tech billionaires. In today's in video, we're diving deep into one of the most mind-bending questions of our time. Are we living in a simulation? The origin of the simulation hypothesis. The idea that reality might be an illusion isn't new. Philosophers like Plato, Descartes, and even Hindu mystics questioned the nature of existence long before modern science. Plato's allegory of the cave describes people trapped in a cave only ever, seeing shadows on the wall, believing those shadows to be reality. Fast forward to 2003, and philosopher Nick Bostrom from Oxford University published a paper that reframed this ancient question with a modern twist. If it's possible to simulate consciousness on a computer, and if advanced civilizations ever I choose to run such simulations, then it's highly likely we're already inside one. His logic was simple, but terrifying. Either one, civilizations never reach a point where they can simulate reality. Two, they reach it, but choose not to. It's three, or they reach it and simulate billions of realities, and we're one of them. Why simulating reality might be possible. Let's take a step back. What would it actually take to simulate an entire universe? or at least a convincing version of one. If you've ever played a video game, you've already experienced a crude form of simulated reality. In open world games like Chi, Grand Theft Auto, or Red Dead Redemption, entire environments respond to your presence. Characters behave with increasing, er, realism. Weather, physics, and even facial expressions are getting harder to distinguish from reality. Now, imagine combining that with quantum computing, neural networks, and AI that evolves on its own. If technology continues advancing, it's theoretically possible to simulate conscious beings inside a fully responsive environment. The key breakthrough would be simulating consciousness itself. And some scientists argue we may already be close. Projects in AI, neuroscience and AI are exploring how to upload memories, replicate brain activity, and even mimic decision-making patterns. The line between organic thought and digital process is getting blurrier every year. If we ever cross that threshold, there's no reason an advanced civilization couldn't have done it already. On a far grander scale, strange clues in our universe. If we're inside a simulation, are there glitches? Some physicists think yes. For example, the universe has a finite speed limit, the speed of light. Why would the maximum for or speed exist unless it's a processing cap? There's also quantum mechanics. Particles behave differently when observed, almost as if the system is rendering only when you're watching. Just like a video game saves processing power by rendering only what's on screen. Then there's the pixelation theory. Some researchers have proposed that space itself may be discrete, not continuous. That white would mean the universe isn't infinitely smooth, but built on a kind of resolution. Like the pixels on your screen, but on a cosmic scale. And perhaps strangest of all, mathematics. The universe seems to obey elegant, consistent laws that can be written down as uh, equations. Why is reality so computable? Why does math work at all? It's almost as if the universe was coded to function that way. What the big thinkers say. You might think this is just philosophical daydreaming, but some of the smartest people on the planet are taking this seriously. Elon Musk famously said the odds that we're living in a base reality, one that's not simulated, are one in billions. In other words, he believes it's almost certain we're inside a simulation. Oxford's Nick Bostrom still stands by his theory and argues that unless future civilizations completely avoid simulations, we are a, probably living in one already. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson, the astrophysicist known for being grounded in scientific skepticism, admitted he gives the simulation hypothesis a 50-50 chance. And theoretical physicist David Deutsch suggests that if we ever create simulated consciousness, we'll have to accept that Arn and simulated people are real people. Part five, counter arguments. Are we fooling ourselves? Of course, not everyone agrees. Critics argue that the simulation hypothesis is unfalsifiable, meaning we can't prove or disprove it. Physicist Sabine Hossenfelder warns that even if we were in a simulation, there's no reliable way to access the outside reality and the, or communicate with the beings running it. That makes the whole concept more of a philosophical position than a scientific uh, one. Others point out the immense computational power required to simulate an entire universe in high resolution, even with 
advanced computing, simulating every molecule, every star, and every mind might be too much. But supporters of the hypothesis respond that we don't need to simulate everything, just what the players, that is us, are eh, observing. Just like in video games, the background doesn't render unless you turn your camera that way. It's not about simulating atoms. It's about simulating perception. Part six, what if we are in a simulation? So let's say we are living in a simulation. Then what? The implications are staggering. First, it changes our understanding of existence. Are we just advanced AI in someone else's program? Is free will real or are we following code? Then there's the moral question. If our simulators can watch us suffer, make choices for us, or even delete us, what does that say about them or about us? Some thinkers suggest the simulation might be a test, a way for higher beings to study consciousness, morality, or the evolution of societies. Maybe we're an experiment or a work of art, or maybe we're just entertainment. Others argue that knowing we're in a simulation wouldn't change much. Reality is defined by what we can touch, feel, and see and perceive. Whether it's carbon atoms or lines of code, experience feels real because our brains say it is. Part seven, how would we escape or contact the simulators? Could we ever escape the simulation or at least prove it? Some theories suggest that glitches or inconsistencies in the laws of physics might be the key. If we can find patterns that don't align with natural laws, data that breaks the rules, it could hint at a simulation. Others suggest that we might send a signal, like tapping on the glass of an aquarium, but would our creators hear it or care? One radical idea is that self-aware beings inside a simulation might eventually simulate their own realities. If we create conscious beings inside our own programs, the number of simulations would multiply, creating layers of reality within reality. I. This leads to the unsettling idea of a simulation within a simulation, within a simulation, with no way of knowing how deep we are. Chen, part eight, the philosophical legacy. Sutter, the simulation hypothesis isn't just about computers. It's about identity, perception, and the search for meaning. Whether we're in a simulation or not, the question forces us to re-examine our assumptions. What does it mean to be real? What makes life meaningful? Can morality exist in a simulated world? Would your relationships, s, dreams, and actions matter less or more? In a strange way, the simulation hypothesis is a mirror. It reflects how little we actually understand about the nature of consciousness, existence, and the universe itself. And maybe, just maybe, it gives us a reason to live with more curiosity, more intention, and more awe. So, are we living in a video game? Maybe, maybe not. But asking the question reveals something more important. We are part of a mystery far greater than ourselves. And whether we're made of atoms or algorithms, we're still here, still thinking, still asking questions. If this video gave you chills, hit that like button and subscribe to The Gadget Grid. We're diving deep into the biggest questions in science, tech, and philosophy every single week. And now it's your turn. Do you think we're in a simulation? If so, what's the purpose of it? Leave your thoughts in the get your comments. I'll be reading the most mind-blowing theories.